Hello everyone! This is a compilation of some of my favorite tips and tricks for training your dog or puppy. I hope you enjoy! Today I want to talk about teaching your dog to work for toys so that they can increase their speed doing behaviors. So Bliss is nine months old. I would usually wait till the dog is around 12 months old uh, when the behaviors are really reliable and they really find playing with toys reinforcing. So you really want to have a clean reinforcement delivery with the toys and I don't have it just yet with Bliss so that's why I'm going to show you. Um, sometimes when I ask him to drop it I haven't really worked on it because I, I have three young dogs and he's my service dog so we've been working on other behaviors uh, more than getting him interested in working for toys so much more calm stuff using food and so now's the perfect opportunity. Now you want your dog to have strong behaviors that they know very reliably for food so they can do the behavior um, spin or twirl or maybe sit is the strongest behavior for your dog or leg weaving and then do it in different environments ask for multiple behaviors and if your dog is reliably doing behaviors you can move on to using toys where your dog is reliably taking it dropping it or fetching it nicely before you then do the training so I just want to warm him up by getting him interested in playing with the toys so I can see that the behaviors are reliable, that he's going to get it when I say get it and drop it when I say drop it. Are you ready, Blissy? Ready. Get it. Oh, good boy. <laughs> that made everyone drop. So if he doesn't drop, I'm going to tap the Frisbee and get him interested in the other one. What's this? What's this? Good. Get it. Awesome. Drop. Good. Get it. Good job. Drop. Get it. Nice. Drop. Get it. Woohoo. Drop. Get it. So um, what I suggest for myself is to work on this exercise three times, you know, uh, maybe this morning or this morning and this evening or three days in a row and really drop. Get that cue where when I say drop the toy, he's like blip and he spits it out because he wants to spit it out. Drop. Good. Get it. So if you were uh, wanting to rush things, if you're going to play tug with your dog and they don't drop reliably when you're tugging, you can let go, get it, and then say drop, and then they will be more reliable letting go of the toy if you're training a behavior and they're getting super excited. Because you don't really want to ruin your drop as you're trying to uh, increase speed in a behavior, because then when you try to use toys in the future, it's going to turn into a, please, can you drop that? Are you ready? He's ready. Are you ready? Free? So I would like to teach him to spin a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do is use the toy as a lure, which we've also worked on. Are you ready? Twirl. Get it. Good job. Good job. And because I'm not sure if he'll drop it, I'll say drop after I let go. Ready? And if he starts to jump for the toys, I can just wait and make sure he's focused again. Ready? Twirl. Spin, twirl, get it, good job. Drop, good, get it, drop. And because drop isn't a very reliable behavior yet, because I haven't worked on it, um, drop, I'm gonna start working on drop and get it as well. So those are two behaviors. Drop, get it, as well as spinning. Drop, get it, drop, get it. Ready, are you steady? Ready, twirl, yes, and twirl, and twirl, and twirl, and spin, and spin, and spin. Ready, spin, woohoo! Go legs, go legs, go legs, go legs. Ready, sit, sit pretty, both paws, twirl. Go legs, sit, pretty, both paws. Can you do both paws? Spin, woo, can you spin? Good, go legs, and down, 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 cross, down, switch, ready, go, get it! So I'm re-engaging him when he slows down by moving the frisbee like this and getting him more excited. Now if I hadn't worked on multiple behaviors before a treat, this is going to really frustrate a dog working for a toy. So that's why I suggest working for multiple behaviors and really building those behaviors strong before using a toy. Ready? One, a two, a three, twirl, uh, spin, spin. One, two, three, spin. 
One, two, three, spin. Ready, go legs. And catch it. This is my boy Halo, he's three, and he used to be slow and steady when he was a little pup because I worked on uh, duration without frustration with the treats. And here he is at three, and you can see I can get him really fast if I want to, and he's not gonna get overexcited. He's just fast with uh, pre precision. Woo, woo, good. So I can use a toy as a lure. I can turn around and I get that really nice behavior of him bringing it back and dropping it. Catch it. Woo, bring, drop. Do you see how fast that is? That's why you wanna work on those behaviors of the reinforcement delivery drop. So I have quite a few, get it, where I let them get it like that. Drop, twirl, get it. Drop, spin, get it. Drop, go legs, get it. Drop, go round. Go round, get it. Drop, go circle, get it, good. Drop, and he's not gonna bite my hand because we worked on it. Woohoo! did you trip? Drop, and we can use the toy to train. This is a game that I use to build speed and reinforcement without frustration. Ready, twirl, get it. Drop, spin, get it. Drop, twirl, get it. Drop, go legs, get it. Drop, go round, get it. Woo, drop, go circle, get it, boom, drop. Drop, and then I proof the get it by not saying it yet. So it's like as Simon says, get it, good. Drop, get it, <laughs> drop, get it, drop, twirl, get it. Oh, that made everyone excited because that's the game they play. Drop, ready, this is for wish, woo. Wishy, go crazy, 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 crazy. Wait, unwind, unwind. Unwind, 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 wait, up, woohoo. Wish and Halo here are actually the world record holders for the most tricks done in 60 seconds because they're so fast. Are you ready? Both paws, left turn, go, go around, go around. Watch out, Cloudy, watch out, Cloudy. Can you wave, can you wave? Yeah, well, see you later, guys. Hello everyone, this is Kiko Pop's tip of the day for today. In my previous tip of the day, someone had commented, how do you train a dog to drop when they're tugging reliably? I already have videos on how to train this using food, but I'm gonna show you how to train it using two toys. So you wanna make sure that you have two toys that the dog values equally, or you wanna have an extra valuable toy in case the dog doesn't wanna drop either of the toys. But you wanna work when the dog is not too excited and you've already worked, I suggest you've already worked on training the drop initially using a food, some very high value food that's more valuable than the toy you're using. So you're gonna use low value toys um, that the dog isn't super excited about. Blissy, ready? And then cue your dog to get it, good, drop. So you're gonna say drop and then flap the other toy around like this until the dog gets it. Now I'm gonna say drop and then get it. So while he's tugging, I'm gonna say drop and flap this one, and then I'm gonna say get it. Good job. If your dog is too excited, they're going to want to jump for the toy. <laughs> well, they might not, but some dogs might. Drop, get it, good. So basically, when I say drop before I then flap the toy, which is also making him get the toy, it's gonna teach him that drop is something exciting and fun, which means whoosh, he gets to get this other toy. And if he doesn't drop the toy, when I do it, I can just let go of that toy at first. Get it. So while I'm tugging like this, and then I say drop, whoosh, I can make this toy then do that same thing. Drop, good, whoosh, get it. Bliss, get it. Drop, wish, get it. Drop, Halo here. <laughs> Halo wants a different one. Drop, Halo get it. Get it Halo, good, drop. So I'm gonna reinforce him with this one because this is the one he really wanted and he played with the one that he didn't really want. So ready Halo, go around. Wish, wait. Wishy, wait, this is for Halo. Halo, go around. Woo, okay, wish, get it. Drop, Halo, uh, Bliss, get it. <laughs> I got my dog's names wrong. Drop, Halo come, drop, 
Halo get it. Yeah. Drop. This is for Halo. Woo. Go get. Oh, now he wants this one. Ring wishy. Okay, now I'm going to say, um, come over here. Wait, this is going to be for Bliss and Wish. So Bliss, get it. Wish, get it. Pull. Good job. Wish, drop. Wishy, drop. Come. Good job. Wishy, here. Let's try that again. That was slow. Bliss, get it. Wish, get it. Wish, drop. Come. Good. So you can see you can get quite a nice drop, um, which is a good emergency behavior if you have a dog that gets over aroused with playing tug or maybe they guard toys. Bliss, get it. Wish, get it. Pull. Pull the puppy. Pull the puppy. I'm going to give it to um, Bliss here. And wish. Pull. Bliss, drop. Blissy, drop. Good. Bliss, get it. And so when I'm teaching Bliss to initially drop it while he's playing with Wish, um, I'm going to be holding the toy because I'm not sure if he'll do it. Do you want to play this tuggy game? And he just wants to run in circles. Get it. Bliss, get it. Good. Bliss, drop. Good. Get it. Pull around, pull around, pull around. If you have a dog that when you hold the toy out, they take it kind of tentatively or they grab it not as forcefully as you want, instead of sticking it out in their face like that, you want to move backwards with the toy so the motion is away and that's going to help them build confidence with wanting to get it. So I'm going to say get it and move backwards. Drop. Because if I say get it, drop, get it, or even hold it still, get it. He's kind of like, ooh, ooh, get it. Drop. Where if I say get it, drop, get it. Yes, drop, get it. Good. And I can say drop, go round, get it. And move it away from him. Drop, go round, get it. Drop. So I'm taking a step to the left. Go round. Get it. Good. That's nice. And then go round. Uh, go circle. Get it. Good. That's a nice grip. That's a nice grip. Yeah. That's a nice grip. Woo. Ready? Woo. <laughs> Woohoo. Woohoo. Drop. Up. Nice. Drop. Drop. Wait. Get it, yeah. Drop. Get it. Oh, good boy. Drop. Get it. Good job. So these are two new toys that I just bought today. That's why they look nice and new. And uh, I'm working on the drop and get it with these two new toys. And he's doing really well. So I'm actually letting him tug for longer. Get it. So tugging for longer and being excited can increase the likelihood of the dog not wanting to let go. So you might just drop the toy and say, drop, get it, good boy. And then make a big deal about the dog dropping it for this one. Bring. So I can play tug with this one, then say drop, and then throw the other one. Woo! To get him used to the concept of dropping, it, dropping when he's pulling to get a toy. And then I can just fade out the extra toy. Go get it, go get it. Good boy. Oh, he didn't see it. Good boy. Okay, now I'm going to try with just one toy. Drop. Here we go. Get it. Yeah. Drop means I'm going to throw it. Woo. So if your dog really hates fetch, don't say drop and then throw it. Say drop and then get it. Because especially if it's a hot day, because they're going to be like, oh no, drop means I have to run over there and get it. Drop. Good. Go. Ready? Drop. Catch it. 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 Good boy. Drop. Twirl. Get it. Woohoo. Today I'm going to be talking about creating a behavior sequence that your dog memorizes, not only to show off your dog's cool behaviors or tricks, but also so that you can teach your dog to work on a variable ratio of reinforcement without frustration. So today I'm going to be working with Bliss here, my um, nine month old Border Collie, and teaching him a cute sequence. So the important thing is choosing behaviors that are strong and that the dog can do reliably. Um, if you have a new 
a, a young dog that doesn't have any reliable behaviors you can choose that aren't that strong uh, you can choose behaviors that are the best that you've worked on the most and then you can revert to using the lure while going through the behaviors and also using a high rate of reinforcement so you might give a, a treat for every single behavior that you ask for so to begin with i'm going to warm bliss up with uh playing with the toy bliss ready get it Good boy. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Drop. Good. Ready. Go around. Get it. Yeah. Good boy. Awesome. Drop. Good. Okay. He's warmed up. So now I'm going to go over the behaviors that are going to be in the sequence. One is going to be sitting. Sit. Good. Get it. Good job. So I'm just testing to see if the behaviors are nice and reliable before I try to make them into a chain. So now he's sitting, he's looking at a, a bird that's landed right off camera. Are you ready? The next one is paws up on my leg. Both paws. Good. Get it. And as you noticed, I have a marker that means you're doing it right, which is good like that. And then I say get it because what I don't want, especially if you have your dog on your back or on your body, that when you say get it, they're gonna like take off of your body and scratch you up, or uh, it can create unreliable uh, behaviors that are a little messy. So I like to, with stationary behaviors, mark the behavior, and then with a marker that means stay there, and then say get it. So it's not that he's got his paws on my leg and then I say get it, and he then pushes off of me to get the toy. Why are you sitting like that? Okay. So we have the sit, we have the paws on my leg, and then we have a twirl behavior and a spin. And I could do these without luring, but you might want to start with luring just so that it's fun and exciting for your dog if, you've, if they've never done a behavior sequence before. Drop. <laughs> okay. The other thing that we're going to do is have him go through my legs. Good. Okay, so now we're going to put the behaviors together. So I'm going to ask him to sit. Good. And then both paws. Get it. Ha <laughs> ha. Good job. And then after he does both paws, I'm going to ask him to twirl. Drop. Good. Twirl. Good. Get it. And why am I letting go of the toy drop to ask him to drop is because he doesn't have a reliable drop when I'm tugging and I feel like using a toy to train this behavior. Are you ready? Go legs. Get it. Good. So after he twirls, he goes through my legs. Then I ask him to sit, drop, sit, both paws, and then spin. Get it. Woohoo. Drop, and then go through my legs again. Woohoo. Good job. Get it. Drop. Awesome. Now, if I wanted to teach him to drop while tugging, that would be its own tutorial. I mean, its own training session of itself. I'm not going to work on that and work on the sequence at the same time. That's too, uh, too much to do in one training session. So I'm making it easy and just asking him to drop when I, when I'm not holding it. So we begin in the sitting position and he's starting to, we actually worked on this <laughs> a little bit already, but he's starting to anticipate what I want next. So, I'm going to wait till he's sitting again and then wait till he does it on cue. So I'm going to say both paws. Good. Twirl. Go legs. Sit. Both paws. Spin. Woo. And that was hard for him. Spin. Go legs. Get it. So now I know that it's hard for him to spin on this side or maybe I just asked for too much. So what I'm going to do is start him here while he's got his paws up on my leg, drop, and then ask him to spin. Sit, paws up, ready, and I'm going to use a nice luring gesture. Ready, paws up, spin, good, get it, nice, woohoohoo, drop, good, spin, get it, good boy. <laughs> So they're uh, doing these sequences also um, brings to light parts of your training that need work. And it's not that he's saying no or that he's stupid, <laughs> but not to call a dog stupid. There's no stupid dogs or stupid people. Drop. It's just a lack of information. 
So um, if I say spin and he doesn't spin, it's just that this cue isn't working. So I can say spin and then use the lure to get him to spin. Ready? Free. Spin. Good. Get it. Woohoohoo. Now Halo's going to show off a little bit. Sit. Ready? Both paws. Twirl. Go legs. Sit. Both paws. Spin. Go legs. Sit. Both paws. Twirl. Go legs. Sit. Both paws. Spin. Go legs. Good. And now the other sequence he has is twirl. Twirl. Turn back through. Spin. Spin. Flip back through. Get it. So if you were going to make a behavior chain with two sequences together, you can always practice them in different orders, but get them used to the transitions between, hello, between sequences so, so, that, um, so that they don't realize that the sequences are going to go on and on forever and that they are these fun short things and they never know what might happen next rather than, oh no, Emily's going to do four minutes of tricks with me and I'm not going to get a toy. So that's what keeps it fun and gets them wanting to do more behaviors for less, reinfor for less uh, primary or secondary reinforcers. You know, the behaviors themselves become fun for the dogs to do. So they even get up from their stay to want to do more. And I'm going to reinforce him. Ready? Get that? There you go. Wish free. Can you nod, 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 stand up, walk on, walk on, go. Walk on, walk on, wait, sit pretty, stand up, get it, good girl, bring, good girl, ready, wish, up, woohoo, thank you so much for watching, if you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button. See you later. Are you ready? Both paws, twirl, go legs, sit, good, both paws, ready, both of them, yeah, spin, get it, good boy, good boy. Hello everyone, I'm going to be training my little puppy Cloud here, he's a terrier mix and he's uh, about 13 weeks old today. Um, I've pre-measured the amount of food he's going to be eating and today um, I'm going to be doing a real-time training session where we're working on the concept of doing multiple behaviors before a treat. So I am going to warm him up a little bit because I haven't worked on the platforms in a while, but sometimes I feel like, and this is just my own opinion, when you ask for multiple behaviors in the same area, they're more likely to think that they got the behavior wrong because that's usually how you train something and if they make an error, they're right where they are. So instead, I'm going to cue him to go to a different area to do the different behaviors. So I can ask for multiple behaviors and then he's seeing that he's done the behavior right, he gets to go to the next platform. Okay, so he has these two blue platforms which are just human exercise mats that I affixed Velcro strips to so they wouldn't slip on the carpet. So to begin with, I'm going to warm up by giving him a treat for every behavior. So I'm going to cue him to go platform. Good boy. And then cue him to sit. Good. Free. Good job. So for him, free means come to me. Go platform. Good. Down. Good boy. And now for pause up. Pause up. Free. Good boy. Oops, I dropped a piece. Good job. Pause up. Let's see if I can get him to turn right next to the couch. Good job. Good boy. Okay, so now we're going to slip in a, a time where he does two behaviors before a treat. And I like to give them uh, a verbal praise, which is good, which means you did it right. But the click is the is the marker that means a treat comes after every click. So you might not agree with that type of training. You can, if you don't like to use verbal praise, you can just be quiet. So you can, um, I'll do an example of that first, where I cue him, I'm gonna get two behaviors. So I'm gonna ask him to go platform and sit. It's actually quite a few behaviors, but two position changes. Free, 
go platform, down. So he's done two behaviors for the tree, like that. And I mark and I reinforce. Or I could say good and reinforce a different marker that he knows. So what I like to do um, myself is I'll just give some verbal praise as well because I don't do obedience where you have to be quiet the whole time. So I like to have my verbal praise also be in there to tell the dog they, they're doing it right. Are you ready? Free. Good. Go platform. Oh, I got the cue wrong. It's pause up. But uh, the visual cue, pause up, is easy for him. So I'm going to get him to do a little bit of turning. Good. And then I'm going to cue him to go here and sit. And um, I'm talking to you, but I'm giving him visual cues as well. So that's why he's doing the behaviors. Crowd free. Go platform. Down. So now I'm going to mark him again so that it doesn't always get harder and harder. So basically you're training on an average. So if you want him to do an average of three behaviors before a treat, then you're not going to do three behaviors, then four behaviors before a treat. You're going to do three behaviors, and then I like to make it drastically lower the next time, so one behavior before a treat. So now I'm going to ask for three behaviors, and, and then mark and reinforce. And the wonderful thing about little dogs, I'm being sarcastic, is they can't eat very much food, so I only have this much left to work with in this training session. Free. So I'm going to feed him. Good job. And then I'm going to um, cue him to do th uh, three behaviors before a treat. I, I wanted to tell you, though, that I'm sitting here stuffing food in his face because I made him do quite a long duration down while I was talking. So you have to consider that what is a behavior? A behavior. Is one behavior one verbal cue? No. Um, a, a long duration down might be easy for one dog and seem like, uh, you know, if you're working on an average of behaviors, it might seem like one behavior. But if it's something super hard for the dog, then I would definitely reinforce that behavior. So maybe spinning or sitting is easy and downing is hard. Then you might always try to reinforce the down and then work on asking for a down um, uh, once that behavior is stronger, then you can start putting that behavior on an average. So you really want to only use behaviors. I forgot to mention this at the beginning. You, sh you should really only play this game where you're moving on to an average rate of reinforcement with behaviors that are super strong for the dog. So I picked ones that are really good for him. And also, he, as you can see, he really enjoys going to the platform. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to ask him to down. Good. Go platform. Over here. <laughs> Free. Good job. Sit. <laughs> he was thinking for a little bit. Free. Pause up. Good. And we're going to turn. 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 Good boy. Awesome. And now we're going to jump up here. Sit. And I'm going to give him a treat because we did three. And then I'm going to cue him to wave. Good boy. And during this training process where you're asking for more behaviors before a treat or the situation is different, you can reinforce behaviors that aren't as pretty as you would want them to be um, normally. So if you add criteria, you expect the behavior to look a little bit less uh, good than you would want it to look. Hey, Pupsy. Did you see when I, um, <laughs> when I asked him to go over there, I almost aborted the training session and, and uh, went back to the one-to-one -one because he, he refused. He was like, no, that seems dumb. That's not a good idea. I haven't got my treat yet for being over here. But then he's learning, oh, if I go there, I'll get the treat. Wave. Good boy. Now I'm going to make it super easy. Go platform. He's not done eating. Oh, he's got to think. He's got to think. He said, I've done more tricks than I, than I got treats. <laughs> Good boy. So I'm going to give him multiple treats here just to make it fun. And then make this platform easy again so he doesn't get superstitious that <laughs> it was this one that was super hard. <laughs> Free. Good. And now I'm going to have him do 
a little bit of turning and then we're done with the treats. Good boy. Good boy. Great. So here's the remainder of the treats. I'm going to let him eat the treats like that. And then I'm going to say, all done. See, they're all gone. You did good. And now we're going to go out to the bathroom. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Today we're going to be working on building your dog's confidence and trust. In this specific scenario, it's Epic's confidence with weaving my legs. She does have luxating patellas, but also I made the mistake of tripping while we were doing leg weaving, and since then she's lost trust and confidence with weaving my legs, and she's finding it aversive. When I ask for doing it, she doesn't want to do it because she is worried that she's going to get hurt because I'm very big and now I am untrustable with my movement because I tripped. So the, the key with if your dog has started to not want to do a certain trick or behavior is first go to the vet and check out to see there's like nothing wrong if you suspect that. But the next step is changing the picture. So I'm going to make the picture look completely different. I'm sitting down. My legs are very stationary and reliable and she's very comfortable around my legs. See. I could work, first work on com being comfortable about, around my legs. If the dog was still really scared of the whatever it is, like the legs, you could try a different object. So maybe two cones and work on that first, build the cue, the trust and confidence, and then switch it back to the old picture if you wanted to do that. So with her, I'm gonna use a high rate of reinforcement. So I'm gonna give her a treat. Actually, she goes in the opposite direction. I'm gonna give her a treat here and then over here. I call it Hansel and Gretel. So they're just doing the behavior, looking for the next treat, and then do this a couple of times where the dog is just getting really confident with going between your legs like that to find the treats. And then you make the treats further and further apart and see if the dog might think to offer the behavior looking for the next treat. So I can also make it more likely to happen by having my hand put a treat here, whoop, like that, and have my hand disappear under my leg so she might think to go under there and I can mark it. Good. And then feed her in the direction that she's going so that I'm creating this nice flowing movement. Then once I've gotten to the point where she is offering the behavior really, really reliably, which she's not yet, I can then go back to adding a cue. And I could add a completely different cue. So the last cue that I had was legs and legs meant uh, recently to not go through my legs and be scared that I'm going to step on her. So I'm going to call it weave. So I can say go weave and then lure her. Go weave. Good. Go weave. Good girl. And then go back to making it super easy where she's offering again because I wouldn't really add the cue here yet, but that would be the next step because she's not quite yet confidently uh, going through my legs and really, really finding it reinforcing. Good girl. So I might get three leg weaves that she offers where she goes like through here and then through here three times before I then add the cue to make it really, really reinforcing. But I did also drop some crumbs, so that's what, why she's hesitating. But usually if your dog is really interested in, in working for the treats that you have and they're tiny, tiny crumbs, it just tells you that uh, they're not completely confident about how to earn the treat. Um, they rather look for teeny weeny little crumbs than do the behavior, so it is information to me. So we're just gonna be working on this the next week. I hope you enjoyed this tip of the day. And if you would like to support my work, don't forget to like and leave a comment because that means more people will see the video and it's highly reinforcing for me when that happens. Today, I'm gonna to be doing another tip on confidence building with objects. So Epic here is very confident with certain objects, but if I uh, introduce a new balance work equipment object, she can be fearful at first of wanting to get onto it. She does have luxating patellas like my little boy Cloud, and so that could be an issue, a fear of being 
unbalanced, but I've chosen safe equipment that's not gonna uh, make her wobble too much. So you wanna make sure um, that your equipment isn't too wobbly because the more wobbly, like if you have something inflatable, you wanna make sure it's inflated all the way. And I suggest playing this game first with objects that are not non-slip and solid, so not even hollow. Um, so maybe just a plant, uh, like a, a, a board or something like that. Okay, so the first tip that I'm gonna give you guys is teaching uh, go to the mat, and I'm not gonna show you how to train that, you can look in the description below for how to do that. But what you do is you build the mat to be a secondary reinforcer to the dog. And she's shivering because it's a little cold here <laughs> inside the house. It's like 70, go get it. <laughs> um, but the great thing about a mat is if you have a dog that's a little nervous uh, around your clumbering huge giant body, if you have a small dog or a dog um, that you've recently adopted and doesn't quite trust your movements, you can free. Teach your dog to go to the mat. Good, and then when you introduce the balance equipment, they can uh, go and target it while you're not looming right over them, and that can help some dogs increase their confidence. Now, if you have a dog that it, they don't mind, you particularly, this isn't so useful teaching them to work at a distance, but using the mat as a secondary reinforcer somewhere they love to go and putting it on the equipment. Now, you might see Kiko wandering around in my videos, in the next few videos, because she's now 17, so she'll be wandering around in the video, so try not to get distracted by her. Um, but this is what happens if you get to be 17, you get to do what you want as a dog. Hey, Kiko, and she loves ear scratches. Okay. I've actually worked on this a little bit, but as you'll see, if I tell Epic to go pause up, go pause up. Oh, she's going to do it. Go pause up, go pause up. She doesn't want to. <laughs> you know, she will initially, but it's, it, she doesn't particularly like it. So what I'm going to do, free, is put her mat, I can't get her off the mat, onto this at first, like this. Good, and you can see that she's very comfortable now with the feeling of sitting on the wobble disc on her mat. So I can mark and reinforce, good. If you had a dog that was worried about being near you, you can say, go to your mat. Good. And if they're worried about you leaning in to feed them, you could then release them free to get their treat. So you can practice having the dog walk over the object from different directions and really start to get very comfortable with it before removing the mat and seeing if the dog um, can go onto the object without the mat. So you can do it in small approximations too. So I could just move the mat a little bit like that. And she probably is gonna target the mat and not the purple part. Good. <laughs> she jumped over it. <laughs> Good job. And if your dog is comfortable, you can sprinkle treats on the object to eat off the object like that. Now, I don't suggest um, sitting next to your dog and if they're really worried about something, putting a treat there on the object and trying to encourage them to go eat it um, if they're really worried. One thing you can do instead is leave the object and put medium value treats around the object and sprinkle them on the object and then the dog can take their time on their own to build the confidence to go and get those treats off the object. And if they want to back away or try again later, they're welcome. But if you're sitting there trying to pressure them into getting the treat, um, and if the treat is really high value, they can be conflicted. So I would use low value treats or medium value treats for an exercise like that. Uh, you know, you don't really want to put the dog into um, a conflict of, oh, I really want that treat, but I'm really scared of that. Hey, Popsy. Okay, so you can see she's got her feet on the feet on it. I'm just going to put the mat half on it and see if she might um, target the actual purple part. Yeah! Awesome. I'll do that from the, from the side so you can see that. Good girl! Woohoo! Awesome. She's like, I prefer this. This is my black mat. You've trained me to be on here. 
Okay, epic free. Now I'm going to move the mat away completely so she can't see it. And then say, go to your mat or go platform, which is going to be the final cue. She's like, what about if I just have two feet on it? For Epic here, I can also try having the object near me to see if that makes her more likely to want to get onto it than at a distance. So I'm going to feed her away from it and then see if she might go on. Now, if your dog is going onto a mat or a dog bed that they're very comfortable with, what I like to say is you reinforce, you mark when the dog gets onto the mat and you feed the dog for being on the mat so that um, being on the mat is where they receive reinforcement. However, if they're really nervous to be on the mat, um, they can be worried about eating the treat while they're on the object and they don't really, you know, they're, you know, conflicted. They want to enjoy that treat, but they're like, ooh, I have to balance while I'm eating it. What if I slip while I'm eating the treat? So you mark and then say, go get it. And then they can enjoy the treat further away. And then when they really get confident with the object, you can feed them while they're on the object. Okay. Free. She's jumping over it. There we go. Good job. Now I'm just putting the treat around the corner so it's the uh, most convenient pathway to get the treat. So she's, if she starts going around like this, it tells me she doesn't really like going on to the object. I left some crumbs on there. Good job. Good. There she jumped over it. So if she's comfortable getting the treats on the object, I can sprinkle them to prevent her jumping and make her less likely to. I sprinkled quite a lot of treats there. Good job. I'm going to turn it. Do you see that? Oh, I guess you can't really see, but she's leaving her back, le back legs behind and she was kind of lifting her paw. Instead of putting it on the object, she was reaching without ooh, touching it with her paw. So we still need to work on this. This is the um, second training session we had with this. I tried it. I tried using this, um, I guess it was two months ago, and we did a little bit of training, and then it sat in the corner gathering dust, and I've been using the platform. She likes to do other behaviors. But I thought it would be fun to show you um, the, uh, what to do if your dog lacks confidence with a certain um, prop or object that you want to use for training or physical fitness or physical therapy. Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to be training my little puppy Cloud who's 11 weeks old, um, a terrier mix, and I've already pre-measured out his treats to use. He's already doing what I wanted him to do. Um, <laughs> And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the magicalness and amazingness and extreme intelligence of little puppies. Here's footage of my Border Collie Halo two days after I got him at eight weeks old. As you can see, he looks like a puppy genius. Good. Go back. Good boy. Turn it all over. Oh my goodness. A lot of times people think that the puppy is stubborn or just doesn't want to learn, or uh, they're, they're not smart. But the thing is, is that uh, if you go and train them to do the same behavior repetitively, like sitting, downing, come and stay and all that, uh, what can happen is that the puppy can start to predict that um, when you have treats in a clicker, it's all about a sit, and then it's really hard to get other behaviors. So what I like to teach puppies is the concept of learning new behaviors and the concept of offering among other things. So um, I will link a video on how to teach your puppy to follow a lure where they're thinking and not just trying to eat the treat out of your hand to learn behaviors, but also 
um, I like to teach the puppies offering. So offering behavior like four feet up on a platform, first taught by luring, Great. two feet on a platform. Uh, this is just a bowl upside down that's non-slip, but you could use a book with a non-slip cover. So paws up on a platform is a great um, behavior to teach your puppy to offer. Going through a tunnel, good job. So that's a fun game to teach your puppy to offer. He said, I would like to stay in the tunnel like a kennel. Going in a crate or a bed is a wonderful behavior and teaching the cue to touch your hand or touch some object. Oh, um, another one is pawing. Uh, if you have a small dog, it's not such a big deal to train it first. I really like teaching footwork because I do canine freestyle and I really obsess over nail training. So I've trained my dogs to um, paw at a target or my hand, but you don't really wanna train that first because you might get a dog that paws you. For really big dogs, I would say wait and train the pawing later and work on just picking up the feet um, of the puppy and handling them because what can happen um, is that you get a lot of offering pawing and with a big dog that grows quickly, it's not the best behavior to teach them to offer before they understand the concept of um, only doing behaviors on cue. <laughs> He's wanting to do the tunnel and the, and the um, two feet up. Okay, so, um, so that's offering and luring. What I like to do is work on the different positions, which is um, really good for their body. The goal of this exercise is teaching the puppy to follow a lure to do different behaviors, as well as how to move their body. You'll find that as your puppy grows, you'll have to retrain this because they'll be in a completely different body. I have a video tutorial on how to train the position changes as behaviors that you then add cues to, and I'll link that in the description below. Using the props is a great way to teach dogs to do different behaviors without having to face you or face the treats. But another thing to keep in mind is uh, behaviors where the dog is moving around you. That's going to be very helpful for teaching the dog the concept of they don't have to be right in front of you to do the behavior. So another great exercise is leg weaving because not only are they learning this, but they're also learning to do something with duration. So at first you start off with a high rate of reinforcement, reinforcing the dog for going through your legs like this. Good. And then you can start to increase how many, how many leg weaves they do. Good. Teaching your puppy to spin to the left and to the right is also a great behavior, but you want to make sure that the movement is slow and, um, and smooth. So they're not bouncing or spinning on their front feet, but they're moving nicely in a circle like that. Um, so if they're not, and they're jumping around and spinning, you can first work on the um, going around the, the object first. So getting that nice smooth movement. So they're practicing moving to the left and the right like that. It's a really good exercise for them and a great uh, for teaching them to follow a lure. Good job. Here's footage of the first time the cloud offered going around the plant. <laughs> And the first time that he offered going through a tunnel, you can really see his brain working. <laughs> Good. Good boy. Good boy. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button. See you later. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add a verbal cue to a behavior and give you some tips for adding a verbal cue where you say a word that means to do the behavior instead of using a hand signal to do the behavior. So actually, I haven't really worked on offering a down from a stand. Oh, good job. Of course, he's gonna prove me wrong. But he, uh, he is mainly, I have practiced having him down from a sit, um, offering it on just a verbal cue. 
while I'm sitting down on the ground, I have actually been asking him to uh, down from a stand, but while I'm standing up and he's just standing, I haven't got him to um, down from a stand. So I'm going to use that as an example. And also spinning um, count, uh, clockwise, uh, which I call spin. He's already started to offer uh, spinning in the opposite direction, but I haven't yet properly worked on getting him to spin uh, clockwise. You ready? Okay. So we'll begin with down. So um, what I'm just going to do is warm him up by luring him into the position. Good. Marking and reinforcing multiple times because it's a duration behavior and then saying free and marking him for getting up. And I'm also going to mark him and feed him for staying standing because the problem was he kept sitting. So we always learned, uh, down from a sit, but stand, he didn't understand because he was always sitting when I asked for down. Okay, so now I'm going to say down, and if he doesn't think to lie down, I'm going to lure him into the position. And I'm not going to worry about how sloppy it looks right now. Free! I can work on him moving nicely and smoothly into the position by doing training games where I'm just luring him like this and getting that nice smooth position changes, but when I first start teaching offering down from a stand where I'm not helping him out, I'm going to take anything, any thinking to go down. So if he wants to flop his legs around or if he has to step around, that's fine. I'm going to mark his offering even though it doesn't look precise and then I can always go back and lure him to get that nice precision if that's something that you're interested in. I am, per, per, uh, you know, interested in it for tricks, but also see how he's flipped his hips like that. If he always, if your dog always lays down in an asymmetrical kind of way, especially if they're a puppy and you're marking and reinforcing it free, you might be inadvertently building muscles inequally on their sides. So if you're going to ask your dog to sit free, sit with offering, then what you can do is if they're sitting crooked, as you go to feed them the treat, um, you can straighten them up a bit. So if they were rolled back sitting on their butt bone, um, you can lure them forwards so they're actively sitting rather than, uh, you know, just letting their legs flop. So I like to feed like that to get that nice sit free. And then also continue to lure the dog into the sitting position. And you can use like a slightly uneven surface to, um, like a fitness pad or doing these exercises on the couch to get your dog looking nice and symmetrical and using all their muscles properly rather than uh, what's going to happen when you ask them to do something when they're first learning to offer. So sorry for the long tip. Um, so now I'm going to ask him to down and if he doesn't lure him free. And because I've been talking a lot, he um, forgot. Whoops. So I'm going to go back to luring down. So basically I'm going to say the cue down and then if he doesn't, I'm going to wait a little bit and then lure him. So the word down predicts the visual signal. So what you're doing free is teaching the dog that the word that you say predicts the cue. And then after repetition, it becomes the cue down. Good. So there he sat and then laid down, which is fine to, uh, to click him offering it, but I can always go back free and cue down and then lure him uh, with the movement that I want uh, for going from stand to down. Free. Good. Down. <laughs> He's like, how about sit? Another thing I can do is reset him and then say down and then lure him into the down position. Another technique you can use if your dog isn't offering yet free is changing your cue very slightly to be less and less obvious to make it easier for the dog to offer later. Because if you're luring your dog like this, the treat is right near their nose the whole time. So that's part of the cue free. So if you try to just stand up like this and see if your dog might think to lay down, um, they might not. So what you can do instead to make it easier for the dog to understand 
is make uh, it so that the dog can operate even though the treat is further away from them. So you can also use no treat and teach them to lay down with, with no treat. Free. So he's seen there's no treat. We were working on paw stuff earlier and he's laying down even though there's no treat and he's getting marked and reinforced. So he's starting to understand that concept. Free. And then I can start to hold the treat further and further away. So I've got him laying down without having to put my hand here. I can put my hand here. Free. This is how I originally trained him um, is first I lured down like that. Good. Marked and reinforced multiple times. Free. Always remember to release him and then held my hand here and just kept cueing the same movement from higher up. Free. And now I'm going to hold my hand even higher. There you go here on my leg and just keep doing that little gesture. Good job. And then Mark can reinforce when he went down free. So that would be the first step, getting your dog to offer with a little bit more distance from the food, because sometimes if the food is way up here, it's a completely different picture and they're never going to think to lay down and they might get frustrated, give up, bark at you, whine, or just, um, do a hundred other behaviors. And that can, uh, be very frustrating for the trainer as well. So it's basically breaking the steps up smaller. So here my hand is here and he's going into the down position. Free. I'm going to do it again. Good boy. And now I'm going to say my cue. Free. Awesome. Ready? So I'm going to say down. And if he doesn't, I can do this little hand gesture on the side of my body. Good job. Down. Oh, I did the hand gesture at the same time. Out of habit. Free. I like to give my dogs little signals. So unless you're practicing for obedience, the more information you give to your dog, the better. So if you're, if you just have a pet dog, you have guests over, instead of standing here saying down, you could just say down and give the hand signal as well. Um, to really be as, um, to, to make the communication as clear as possible free for your dog. So um, again, unless you're doing obedience where you're not allowed to use a verbal cue and a visual cue at the same time, there's no harm in doing it unless you want to impress people as a dog trainer. Okay, now we're gonna learn to um, spin clockwise. If you're going to be teaching your dog to offer different behaviors on only a verbal cue in the same training session. It can be a little bit confusing if you stay in the same area because what you've been doing is been standing still and that cues the dog to do the behavior that they were offering before. So because we've been working on the down here, um, if I stand still, he might think to, that it's to lay down uh, because he hasn't learned the new verbal cue yet. Uh, where it's like a green light and here's the word and it makes him do the behavior um, uh, where it's created a stimulus response association uh, for the dog. Um, so what I suggest is if you're going to work on multiple tricks or behaviors where they're offering after just a verbal cue, do them in different locations of your house. So here I might work on the down. He already knows what I'm going to ask for next. And um, here I want to teach him actually to spin in the opposite direction. Um, we worked on spinning uh, anti-clockwise with just offering, um, but we haven't worked on the other direction. So I am going to do it here, free, but you can see he's already offering a down. So it would be smarter for my training to do it um, somewhere else. So here we go. I'm going to refresh him with the behavior. So I'm going to cue him spin and show him the hand signal and I'm luring him too. So I'm luring him in a big circle like that. So if you were going to first work on the dog, um, following less and less of an obvious gesture, you're just going to make the circle smaller, have no treats in your hand, do a nice big gesture. He said, where'd the treat go? <laughs> Ready? There we go. He, he was a little confused. I've not actually done that before with him. I usually just make the treat go further and further away. There we go. Good job. Make the treat a little bit higher up 
and the circle smaller. So I'm just going to be able to do a little finger flick before he can turn. As you can see, if I do a little finger flick now, he doesn't know what that means. So this means nothing to him. Um, I have to do a bigger gesture and I'm leaning my body forward as I'm doing it to get him to spin like that. So what I'm doing is slowly in approximations, um, making my gesture smaller for the, for the same behavior. Now you don't have to make it harder and harder. So if he actually did respond to a little finger flick like that, he's like, are you throwing a treat? What's going on here? If he did respond like to a little teeny finger flick, then the next um, trial, I can do a really easy one so that what happens is he doesn't then try something else and get frustrated or just think it's really hard because um, he's just trying to figure out what you want. So you're giving him a clue again after he offers. Now I'm going to say spin <laughs> and then lure him. Good job. Ready? Spin. Good. And if they do half the behavior, you can finish it off by luring them. So even if he turns his head just a little bit to the right, spin. He's like, I really want to go the other direction. <laughs> See? Spin. Yes. Another thing I can do is because I taught um, spin in front of me, I mean twirl the other direction in front of me like this, I could teach spin initially on my right side so that um, it looks different. So he's not think more likely to think about doing the other behavior, which is twirl. Ready? Spin. Good. Now I'm going to just uh, be quiet and work on the cue spin where I'm not blabbing in between. Ready? Spin. 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 Yes, good job. Spin. Good boy. There we go. I'm making my gestures less and less. Spin. Let's see if you might think, yeah, there we go. Good boy. <laughs> Ready? Spin. He really wants to go the other way. <laughs> Spin. Good boy. And we'll stop there because uh, I'm very pleased with what I've got. You want to do high five? Good job. And you can end on something fun if you want. Spin. Good. Here's footage from much later in the day when I did a 40 second training session with him and you can see he really catches on to the verbal cue. I'm going to be talking about duration in behaviors. Now Cloud is pretty good at a very long down position, but I've just taught him to stand. And now before I go too many days or even weeks teaching him to stand and he only stands for a few seconds, I want to teach him the concept that he has to stay in the position until either I ask for a different position or I release him with a release cue such as free or uh, let's go or okay or whatever. Okay, so <laughs> the reason I don't like to choose okay is I say it all the time, so I laughed at myself. My release cue is free or get it. Free means come to me, get it means get whatever treat there is on the ground. So I can say get it and then throw the treat like that and he knows he can get up. So if you're having a dog that's really struggling uh, with uh, the concept of staying, if you've done a lot of leave it, uh, proof it for leave it, leaving stuff, hi, <laughs> he thinks we're doing the bow to the stand that we were doing previously in the tip of the day. Um, so you can see why I need to work on the duration. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a quick little game. I actually have a tutorial on it, but it's really building the concept that the behavior ends and then something happens at the end. 
Sometimes with uh, treat training, people train the behavior in a training session, but then in real life, maybe they're in the kitchen, they wanna give their dog a treat, so they say sit, and then they give their dog a treat, and then they walk away. And then the dog is sitting there, and then at some point the dog thinks, oh, he, uh, I don't have to sit anymore, I'll get up. Um, so it's really important for clarity that there is a very, very precise ending that they're waiting for, so the release cue. Okay, you've had a lot of treats now, free. So what I'm going to do uh, your dog needs to know a leave it for this exercise. I am also going to utilize the end of the carpet, so I'm actually going to turn my back to you um, so that he knows to stay on this carpet where we've worked on the exercise before. Okay, so I'm just going to get him straight. And usually I have my dog right in front of me, but I'm going to try and do it at an angle so you can, you can see him better. But I'm going to ask him in the position that he's best at, which is a down, I'm going to say leave it and I'm going to put these treats down here. Um, but you can see he's getting up thinking that he can get them. So this is a great proofing game because duration is staying in the, in the down um, and not just getting up immediately thinking that this means get up. They're waiting for the release cue. Uh, there's stimulus control on the release cue, meaning other cues don't mean get up. So. Um, I actually made a video on this about proofing for distractions. So you're first gonna click as the distraction happens and then go to pretend to put a treat down if your dog doesn't know, leave it, which he, I guess, doesn't know in this situation. So I'm gonna say, leave it, and then put the, <laughs> and then put the treat down on the ground. Good. Leave it. <laughs> Good. Leave it. Awesome. Leave it. Good boy. Leave it. Awesome. Leave it. Good job. Leave it. So when he's very confident with leaving it, if you have a dog that's really good at leave it, you might have to work on the cue of get it, which means they can actually have whatever it was. So basically, it's a very, very simple game and a great way to learn the concept of you're in a position, you're waiting, and then you get a cue where you can get up. So um, by having something they really want and they're focused on this one thing, they're gonna be more likely to understand, in my opinion, the concept of stay, I can't get that thing until I hear that cue. Now you don't want to do this for hours and hours, it's just to, to initially train that concept of stay and get it. So I'd only do this for two to three seconds. And then when the dog is understanding the concept of, um, of the duration, you can add, I mean, of getting up only on the cue, then you can add duration and then um, there's not going to be like a treat tempting them. They're just going to be laying and you can mark and reinforce. Because you can see it's way easier for him when there's not something that he really wants right in front of him. But those games are really going to help with build the concept of the behavior ends at some specific point that I'm waiting for. Free! Good boy. So if he doesn't get up when I say free, I'm going to lure him or say get it and then throw the treat like that. Down. Leave it. Leave it. Good. Good. Good job. <laughs> Cloud. Good job. You can see he's getting a little frustrated because uh, he's like uh, moving around, looking at the treats, wagging his tail. So I'm going to say, get it. And I can use lower value treats next time. I stupidly only have the same value for giving him some and also on the ground. So if you can use a lower distraction as the, I mean, as the thing that they're released to like kibble, and then he gets a higher value treats like a piece of hot dog, that can be very helpful. Leave it. Good boy. Good job. Okay, so now I actually thought I wouldn't have to do that. Um, that's where I should really end it and work on the down with the distraction. 
but instead <laughs> I'm going to show you how to work on the stand with that distraction. Up, good, by doing this. And I think it helps the concept of uh, having the dog on the edge of a platform or a carpet at first, but you want to quickly move on to where they're free, somewhere else, like uh, right in the middle of the carpet as well, so that they don't only think staying is about being on the edge of a carpet. Leave it. Good boy. Ready? Up. Nice. Good. 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 Up. Nice. Good. Whoops. That made him move his foot a little bit. Ready? Up. Good. 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 Down. Down. Good. Leave it. Good. Are you ready? Up. Good boy. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. That's so good. You figured it out. That's right. Oh, <laughs> it's like I'm going to lay down now. <laughs> down. Good boy. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pop by clicking the join button, and that gains you access to a member's video a month that you can find in the community section of my YouTube channel. See you later. Somebody recently commented they would like a uh, tip of the day on working with distractions. I suggest beginning in a room of no distraction where your dog is finding your reinforcement, the most reinforcing thing to do, teach the concept of working around distractions and then start to add on them, add on that in baby steps. If you try and go out somewhere and work on distractions, you might have the same problem that you would have if you were working with a dog with a reactivity and something could go well and then something could go badly. So it's really unpredictable. So it's better to build the strength of the behaviors of your dog listening to you and finding the behaviors you want them to do, reinforcing when there's nothing around. So what's happening is conditioning. The dog is really, um, enjoying the reinforcement, so it's going to make the behavior more likely to happen. Where if they're out and about and everything's really distracting, like you're at a cafe and there's crumbs everywhere and you're asking them to lie down but they want to eat the crumbs or something like that, um, it's <laughs> you can imagine that the dog is not going to be thinking that laying down with you is the most reinforcing thing to do. So you build on it. Are you ready? So Bliss is my 10 month old Border Collie mix. I got him from a family that lived out on a ranch, and he's a mix of, uh, according to Embark, he's a mix of Border Collie, 30% cattle dog, and then they say he's got some German Shepherd and, and um, Rot <laughs> Rottweiler, perhaps, in his mix, but you never know. Okay, so let's get started. Because he's already been settled, I'm going to ask him to get up and then lay down again. Free. Good boy. And now I'm going to ask him to down. Good job. So what you first want before you add distractions is at least five seconds of a behavior if it's a maintained behavior. So um, where the dog stays in position, you can mark and reinforce the dog. That way you can start adding distractions. Now I already have tutorials on adding distractions and teaching stay behaviors with different types of distractions like toys and treats, but this is just a fun little taster video. So the very, very basics of adding a distraction is you choose an environment where the dog can learn, you present the distraction in a, as low level as possible that you know the dog's not gonna get up like that, and you mark. So you either say yes or good or whatever your verbal marker is, that means they're gonna get a treat, or you clip. So I'm holding the treat out, I mark, and then I reinforce him. 
So this is the distraction for the moment, but most dogs get up if you put a treat down. So if I put it down here, he probably would get up thinking I was giving it to him like I am there. But this is a new picture. And basically what you're doing is you make it this step so small that you can put a treat down on the ground if you do this enough and the dog is not going to get up. So you're marking them for wanting to stay in the down position when distractions happen. So not only are they learning um, using a parent's conditioning where they're learning, oh, I stay in this position, I get food, but they're also learning, oh, when there's food on the ground, I love laying in the down position, which is classical conditioning. So the dog is having that calm, happy response to seeing something in the environment fall rather than um, feeling frustrated about it. So if he was under a table and a piece of food fell um, in front of him like that, he's gonna stay there and know that he, it's more reinforcing to stay where he is. Good job. It's basically brainwashing, isn't it? You wanna nod? You gonna nod? Good. <laughs> okay. So now I'm gonna free him, free! And then I could even say get it with this type of game. And then the next step, because first you're clicking as the distraction happens and you can increase how difficult the distraction is as you're clicking as the distraction happens, but you can also make the same distraction happen and then add duration and delay when you mark. So. At first I was doing this and it might have been too much for him at first, but you can see it's really easy. And then I was doing this so I can delay the clicking. And now I can delay the dropping the treat. <laughs> my, my unconscious knew that <laughs> I should click as I dropped it with him because he's never learned this yet. But let's just pretend that we worked on it a little bit and I'm just going to drop the treats now because um, I'm adding the, the duration of the distraction. And did you see he shifted a little? I think he was thinking about getting up. I clicked him or I reinforced him by feeding him um, for staying. So he might have been thinking a little bit, but I'm going to say, yes, you still are in the down position. So you're getting it. And then I'm going to make it easier. So I'm going to click every time I drop the treat at first, which is what he's like. What if I crawl all the way there and play st Ooh, stretchy games, ready? So I'm just gonna lure him back with the treat, ask him to down, and then make it easier. Good. Good. Another thing you can do is add criteria as to what you want that behavior to look like. So at first, um, as the distraction happens, he's looking at it. If that's not what you wanted and you wanted your dog to look at you, you could then make the distraction a little bit easier and repeat it and then see if your dog might offer looking at you or you can ask for the attention. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to make my attention noise or say his name. If you have a board of color, they might just enjoy watching your hand do that. Good boy. When you first start working on a distraction, it's a good idea to be extremely repetitive and repeat the same movement exactly the same and then build on it so that the dog is also habituating to it and finding it extremely boring. And then when the dog is having success, then you wanna start adding variability to the behavior so your dog is really gonna understand the concept of it rather than it happening in this very small controlled picture and then in other situations they're going to think their brain is going to think unconsciously oh this is a different picture it probably doesn't mean the same thing or they might not even remember uh, what they're supposed to do so you're doing the same repetitive movement and you can build on it exact for example like you're doing this and then you're dropping the treat and it's very repetitive and you build on it and then when they learn it, then you start varying. But if you vary too much while you're training the new behavior like this, hello Kiko, um, then what can happen is the dog can keep getting up. So my, th my theory, my um, tip is that if they get up two to three times um, in the training session for the same thing, then it's too hard and you need to go back a step or think of a way 
to break up the information, uh, break up the steps so the dog can get it easier. Now, Kiko, my little chihuahua, as you might have heard me say earlier, is 17 and she is um, deaf and partially blind, so she just gets to wander around and get treats. And she's a really good distraction for Bliss. <laughs> hey, Pupsy. Today I'm going to be talking about asking for a behavior at a distance and beginning from scratch. So with Epic here, she has a couple behaviors that are pretty strong. Uh, I wouldn't say reliable, but I believe that by doing some distance work, that's a great way of proofing those behaviors. So one behavior that would be super cute is teaching her to sit and wave from a distance. So I'm beginning by first uh, warming up with the behavior and getting her used to the fact that we're just going to be working on, on waving. I gave her a big treat. Are you ready? So I'm going to ask her to sit and then I'm going to lure the behavior with the way that I initially trained it just to get her really uh, focused and motivated for waving that paw. So on a, vi a visual cue and also I can have the verbal cue as well which is called wave. So I can say wave, good. So when I'm first training a behavior, I'll say wave and then do the hand signal so they can learn the verbal cue. But then when I'm asking for the behavior, I do both at the same time because otherwise if the dog is super fast, they're gonna be waving when I've said the cue and then I'm waving at them after they've already waved. So I find it uh, much more uh, helpful to say wave as at the same time, do both. Okay, and then just make sure they know uh, just the visual and, and the verbal. Okay, before I fill you up with treats, free, um, what I'm gonna do is send her to the, the mat, give her a treat for that, so I'm keeping a high rate of reinforcement for all the other stuff she's doing in between, like waiting for me to shut up and waiting for me to move away. And this is gonna make her more likely to want to wave when I'm at a distance like this. Make sure I'm still in the shot. But you can see the wave wasn't very, wasn't very pretty. And now she's sitting right where we usually do the wave. So um, to, for dogs, they think that, well, not that they think, but for, for all animals, they don't generalize well. And the cue um, has to do with the environment. So she's trying to make the cue how it's supposed to be by getting right where she's supposed to be to do the cue. So by having a mat or a couch or the end of a carpet to help them understand that the location is part of the cue and this is part of the cue, this location to begin with, it's a little crutch to help her learn to do the behavior at a distance. So even if the behavior looks crappy, um, that one looks good, but do you see how she came forward? I'm just gonna click and then feed her in the position and then make it easier for her. So you don't have to make training harder and harder, otherwise dogs can lose motivation to uh, wanna work. I'm trying to break the treat into a smaller treat. It was a little big. My nose always runs when I'm filming. Okay, super embarrassing. Oh gosh. Okay, so she, she's copying my arm movements. That's why she uh, lifted up her little paw. Are you ready? Another thing I'm gonna do is mark her not offering behaviors. She said, I need to get to that ham. There we go, okay. Wave, good. Now I'm just gonna be quiet and try to get a couple of repetitions that look good. She said, you're too far away right now. Good. Good. Wave, good. I'm gonna wait for her to get back onto the platform. And what I could also work on free is just being in a sit stay at a distance from me. Um, <laughs> Cause now she's offering a down. She says, if I could just get close enough, I could get them. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Good, she got it. <laughs> ready? That's awfully cute. Wave, good, good, wave, good, good, good. 
Hold on, hold on. I'm just getting ready here. Here we go. Ready? Wave. Good. Good. And because she keeps jumping off of this, I might try on the couch first. Epicky, jump up. Good. And see if I can get more distance away from her using the precipice. She can jump down. Go jump up. And I am going to move this mat so it's not so confusing for her. Ready? Yes, that's right. She's like, how do I wave and come forwards on this precipice? <laughs> Good. Now I'm going to try from further away, and then I'm going to make it easy again. So there, she didn't do it as precisely, but I'm going to come close to her and then get that precision back. So you want to work on one uh, criterion at a time. So if I want precision, I'm going to work from close by. And if I want to work on distance, I'm going to mark things that I don't think look so pretty. But if I work on uh, the both at the same time, that I can go back and fix the pre uh, precision so she's more likely wave to do it precisely from a distance. Epiky, go out, sit. Wave, good, whoopsies, almost fell off. Epic free, ready Epic? Go jump up, sit, wave, good, 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 wave, good job, good, free, good girl, ready? Go jump up. Good. Down. Head down. Okay. Good. Head down. Okay. Good. Down. Up. Crab. Up. Yes. Good boy. Down. Good. Whoops. Up. Yes. Good boy. Good job. Up. Nice. Down. Good. Sit. Good. Pop. Nice. Sit. Good. Down. Awesome. Today's tip is no treats, no toys, no problem. What do I mean by that? How can you get your dog to listen to you if you don't have treats or toys that they want? Some dogs, they always <laughs> want the treats and toys you have and so all you have to do is bring a little piece of hot dog in your pocket and your dog will do anything for you. The dog likes the piece of hot dog better than anything in the environment. So you can actually build that and condition that. But another really important aspect of of the training is three important things. One, that the dog isn't over aroused or over excited or fearful. If the dog is suffering from these like extreme emotions, when you're asking them to do a behavior, their brain isn't going to function the same way. They might be in fight or flight uh, escape mode. And so they're not going to be able to, uh, to comprehend what the whole situation. They're either fighting for their life or fleeing or going to kill something, maybe it's prey. So um, it's important to work on your dog's arousal and excitement first as the, as, the, as the topic of what you're gonna address in your training. So instead of saying, ooh, I need to proof my recall, my sit, my stay, my whatever you want, loose leash walking, um, anything, uh, any behavior that you find important. If you want those to be important, all you have to do is work on the arousal. And then when your dog is not overexcited or scared in a certain environment, then of course they're gonna listen if you've reinforced those behaviors and done some proofing and generalization. Um, the other really important thing to keep in mind is uh, teaching your dog the concept that um, what they want is contingent on doing stuff for you. So when you ask something of your dog, do they think, oh, if I do what they want, I get what I want? Or 
Does your dog think, oh, she's asking me that. I don't feel like doing that. I want to do that. If only you can teach your dog that concept that they get to do what they want to do by listening to you, then it's in their best interest and they find it highly reinforcing because you can reinforce them with the thing they want most. So if your dog loves sniffing, loves seeing other dogs, loves people, instead of using toys or treats where they're like, I guess I can sit for the treat, oh, but I really want to see that person. And then they finally get to see the person like, oh, I love this much better than the treats. Um, instead of using treats and toys, if they're more interested in something else, um, uh, social interaction, you can use whatever it is that they, that they are interested in as the reinforcer. So you ask your dog for something really easy and really simple at a distance, they're able to do it. And then you can say, okay, go say hello, or okay, go play at the dog park, or, or whatever it is that they want to do. Go sniff a bush and pee on it. If that's what their thing is, you can make that contingent, um, their contingent on doing stuff for you. So um, if you have a marker, a dog that marks around in your yard, and then you call them back inside and then close the door on them, you're literally punishing them for for coming to you because you took away something that they wanted. They were having a great time and you ended it by using your recall. So if you keep doing that, uh, the science behind the training is going to say the dog will come less because you keep taking away the reinforcement um, and punishing them. So to make it reinforcing, you have to be strategic in that you let your dog out to pee. Maybe you ask them to do something for you. You let them out to pee or maybe you've gone to a field. They're walking around peeing on stuff. You call your dog back uh, and you could start out really easy by um, you're walking on a sidewalk and letting them sniff bushes and then between bushes where they see a bush up ahead and they're on a short leash, you call your dog to you and they're like, oh, I really don't want to. I'd rather sniff that bush, but they can't reach it. And they're like, oh, okay, I guess I can turn to you. They turn to you, you reinforce that by saying, good, go sniff. And then you rush over and you're like, ooh, look over there and over there and over there. And you point out all the spots for them to sniff. Another way of making it a little easier is you let them sniff that bush, you call them away and let them sniff the same bush. So they're finding it easier because that temptation to sniff the bush is less because they, they know what it smells like, maybe they've already peed on it. And then you can begin with baby steps and then build on it. So first you're calling them away and they're like, yes, I can do this with a, a bush that doesn't smell that much. And then to, I mean, which they've gotten to sniff already and they're not that interested in, to more exciting stuff. Another one is you can park in a parking lot at a park and then there's the green grass that's not reachable yet. So it's just boring tarmac or pavement. You ask your dog to come to you. It might be really hard and you might have to use treats and toys at first. Um, and then when your dog comes to you, then you can say, okay, go sniff and then let them on a long leash to go and enjoy sniffing around. If your dog just runs straight ahead and pulls you, one great thing to do is point out the areas that you want your dog to smell, or you could sprinkle treats in the grass and point those out as the thing to get your dog to slow down so they don't just run, <laughs> run away from you. And then the final step to getting your dog to want to listen to you is by not asking too much. They are not robots. They are living beings with um, desires and wants and needs. There are certain things that they need and there are certain things they want to do. And if we just keep making them do everything that we want them to do all the time, um, it can feel like nagging. Like if you've ever had, I don't know, uh, maybe you haven't had someone nag on you all the time, but constantly being told what to do all the time. So giving your dog choices to make and also um, not nagging all the time. So setting the environment up for success. So uh, you're not always having to tell your dog what to do. And the final tip is building a trusting and reinforcing relationship with your dog. So a lot of people will describe online treat training as bribing. And yes, using treats like that where you bribe the dog, I do believe it's damaging. For example, um, instead of training your dog to want to go into their kennel, some people will try to trick the dog and they have a treat, they throw the treat in and when the dog goes, oh boy, a treat! And then they go in and they eat it and then you're like, ha ha, 
now you're in your cage close by and then you leave the dog can feel tricked the dog feels like whoa every time this person does something I think it's gonna be something good and then it turns out really bad like for example I was playing with my friends okay dogs don't talk but they're playing at the park and then the person calls me and then he puts me on leash and puts me in the car and I thought something good was gonna happen and instead he took away you know my fun time so all these certain um, examples of, of using a treat or a toy to get your dog to manipulate your dog to do something is not what I'm talking about. It's about um, creating reinforcement for behavior that you like. So you're not trying to trick your dog into doing something that's in, not in their best interest, but you're not only giving your dog choices throughout the day, allowing them to enjoy different activities that come natural to their breed, but also you're asking things of them and providing reinforcement that they actually enjoy. So maybe it's treats, maybe it's toys, or maybe it's access to what they want. Nobody likes to be nagged all the time. So try to keep that in mind that dogs aren't these robots, especially if you have a puppy or an adolescent dog, they've literally only been on earth a couple of months. So to expect this dog to listen to every single thing you ask them to, we would never ask that of a human or a toddler or a baby. So really keeping that in mind that you want to ask your dog to do things, but keep it to a point where it's not just a ridiculous amount that we're asking from our dogs and making it fun and positive for them. And then you're going to get a dog that really wants to do the things that you want to do because you get, you also allow them to do the things they want to do. And it's a mutual, a uh, wonderful relationship to have with an animal. Hey Epic, yeah, you get scratches. Something that she really likes is having her neck scratched like this. Hey Epic, oh, she liked that. Here's some footage of my Border Collie Halo at about nine months old, where for a month, he stopped finding food reinforcing when we were out of the house. And as you can see in this footage, he still is able to do the behaviors because I've played games like the ones that I've described in this video. Okay, go. go play. Halo, come. You want the treat? Ready? Twirl. Halo, go legs. Woo. Halo, go legs. Okay, go. Go play. Go play, go play. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like this video and leave me a comment as it's highly reinforcing to me. You can also subscribe to my channel and become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button. See you later.